Hey, want to know the secret to playing scales all across the neck? Well, it's going to be modes. Sort of. Let me show you what I mean. So if you've seen my last video, or you know how to switch between relative, major, and minor scales, then you know we can combine the major and minor pentatonic scale to give us one big set of notes to play around in. This means once we're in a given key, placing these shapes in a certain spot on the fretboard, we can simply switch back and forth between the two shapes and the two positions as we please. But this still only covers so much of the fretboard. What if we want to reach even more notes? Well, we can take this concept of relative scales and add even more positions to reach even more notes across the neck. So let's have a look at our next scale shape, which once we learn it, we'll be able to put next to the major pentatonic scale to reach even more notes. But you might notice that this shape actually spans five frets instead of just four. This means we'll actually have a slight position shift within the scale. So let's have a closer look. This scale, kind of like the major pentatonic scale, is actually going to start on our second finger, which I'm going to put on the fifth fret. So starting off, I'm just going to focus on my finger combination, which is just going to be two and four on the first three strings. And then next up, I have one and four. And then this is where I'm going to actually have to shift up by one fret to reach all the notes on the next string, but it's still just a 1-4 finger combination. And then 1 and 3 on the high E string. And of course, I've got to go back down, starting with 3-1. And then 4-1. And then shifting back down by one fret, I have 4-1 again. And then 4-2 on the next three strings. So overall, it's a very simple scale shape. There's only two different finger combinations in the whole thing. But having a slight position switch within the scale does make it a little bit tricky. And we're going to want to memorize this scale shape before we shift up to it from the major pentatonic scale. But if the other two scales were called major and minor, then what do we call this one? Well, that's where modes can come in handy. So usually you might hear modes really talked about as their own keys, other than major and minor. And that is how they're often used and talked about in music theory, but we can use them for something else here, naming the scale. If we look back at our major and minor pentatonic scales, part of the reason why we name them that is because we started on those root notes on the low E string, but now we're starting somewhere else on a different note in the scale. And this is really where modes come from, taking a major or minor scale and starting on a note that isn't usually the root. Again, if we treat this note like the root, we get a whole new key other than major or minor. But that's not really what we're doing here. Remember, the key that you're in is going to be set by the chord or the accompaniment that you're playing along with. And it could be modal, but this doesn't happen all that often. For our purposes here, we really just want to use the mode as a name for the shape. That'll help us remember how it fits in with all the other ones. So this shape that I just showed you, we could call the Dorian pentatonic scale. Because Dorian is the name of the mode that you get when you start on the second note of the major scale. And that happens to be the note we're starting on, on the low E string. In other words, if I were to name this shape by whatever the lowest note is, I'd call it the Dorian mode. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean that whenever we play this scale shape, we're always playing in Dorian. I'm really just using the name of the mode to help memorize the scale shape and build an association with the other scales. In this case, knowing that the Dorian mode is going to be right next to the major scale. Speaking of which, let's have a look at how this Dorian pentatonic scale lines up with the major pentatonic scale. Just like the minor and major pentatonic, there is a little bit of overlap, and we want to look for spots where we can shift cleanly from one position to another. Also like going from minor to major, I'm going to first look for spots where I can shift up on my first finger. Unfortunately, there's only one between these two scale shapes on the G string. But let's give it a try. I'll start my major pentatonic on the fifth fret, which would sound kind of like this. Then when I get to here, I can shift up by two frets. And then I'm in my Dorian pentatonic scale. On my first finger, I go to my fourth finger. But then I have to sh do that slight position shift going to my first finger, and then to my fourth finger. And I can go back down, switching in the same place. Shifting down by one fret, and then shifting down by two frets and finishing off the rest of the major scale.
So you can see that switch, despite being on the first finger, is still a little bit tricky because we're switching up into that Dorian pentatonic scale, right where we have that slight position shift within the scale itself. So we're going to have to find some other places to switch up as well. And in this case, there are a few where we can switch up on our fourth finger. And looking at these scale shapes, I can do that on both the A and D string, which will shift me right into position. So let's try the A string shift first, again, starting my major pentatonic on the fifth fret. And then shifting my fourth finger up by two frets, I'm in position to finish the rest of my Dorian pentatonic. My slight position shift here. Back down again. Shifting back down two frets on my fourth finger and finishing off the rest of the major scale. And the same thing on the D string. Up two frets on my fourth finger. My slight position shift. My slight shift back. Shifting down by two frets on my fourth finger. And the rest of the major scale. And just like going back and forth between the minor and major pentatonic scales, we want to be able to go back and forth between these two, switching in different places. For example, maybe switching up on the G string and then back down on the A string. Kind of like this. So see if you can get this Dorian pentatonic scale under your fingers and start switching back and forth between it and the major pentatonic scale. Again, don't worry too much about the theory of modes because for now we're still just using it to play in major and minor keys. The main thing you gotta worry about is gonna be that slight position shift within the scale. The idea is still to get a feel for how these shapes are laid out across the neck to be able to access more notes. And once you've integrated this shape, then we'll be able to span between the minor, major, and Dorian pentatonic scales, allowing us to cover a decent amount of ground across the fretboard. And after this, we only need two more scale shapes to map all the notes in a particular key across the entire fretboard. This means that no matter what key you're playing in, you can play anywhere on the fretboard. But in the meantime, just focus on this shape and switching back and forth between it and the major pentatonic scale. Just like before, it's good to practice just going up and down the scales and switching back and forth in different places. And playing along with a backing track doesn't hurt either. So give this a try, and as always, happy practicing.